Monique is a liar. She's lying about that. But what you will find is Monique talking about some uh, uh, alleged contract dispute we had. Look at the ticket. It says D.L. Hughley, then Monique. She knows the story. But what she did in response to that, she talked about my dog, my wife. This broad even bought out my daughter's personal trauma. My daughter was molested and Monique bought that shit out and, t and told the world that I allowed my daughter to be me. The lying mother. What's up, YouTube? It is your boy once again with another episode of Foolery. And the foolery it is. Monique, 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 Monique. Oh my God. When will it end? I mean, she goes on Club Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp's uh, podcast. And everybody's been waiting to see what she's going to say. But I kind of figured she was going to say the same old stuff. So she runs down the list again about the people she has an issue with. I pretty much say the same stuff. But let's look at it anyway. And let's critique it a little bit. And let's see what's going on with Monique. Like, should she start letting this stuff go and just move on? Or what's your point? That's where I'm at with it. What, what, what do you want now? You know, you didn't exposed it before, but what do you want now? So we're going to start out with DL. She hit on DL again, and uh, DL clapped back. So let's get at it. But you know what you got to do first. Hit that subscribe and that notification bell. To do what? To get the next video. No further ado. Let's get it. Let's go. I do DL's t uh, radio show. Yes. DL Hughley is not there. His team is there. Mm -hmm. And Shannon, we having a great time. I mean, baby, we having a great time. We going forth, back and forth. When we get to the end of the show, they say, <coughs> Monique, you want to play a game? Well, I want to play. I said, sure, sugar. Let's play a game. And it's a game called Would You Rather. No. Oh. OK? Now. Mona, you already you should have said I'm too old for this game. Wait a minute, we're having fun, baby. <laughs> right? We having a good time, okay, Shannon. Okay. okay, we. I mean, it's the sister there and it's two other guys. We're having a great time. It's okay. a beautiful Black Unity cookout. Okay. We're having a good time. Okay. Would you say your wife was your family? Is that considered family? Yeah. So your husband is considered family, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. So here we go. They said, Monique, we want to play a game of would you rather. Let's go. Would you rather your husband sleep with Lee Daniels with a condom or Corinne Steffens without one? Really, Monique? Now, as y'all are watching right now who haven't heard this story, y'all going, huh? they doing the same thing in the studio. They going, huh? okay. That is exactly what happened. Now, I said to the team, how does that uplift our community? I said, sister, and her name is Jasmine, how could you ask another sister that? Well, we just planned, I said, tell me the joke in that because I don't know what you're insinuating. Then you're involving people that have nothing to do with nothing. Like, what are y'all doing? So I said, I'm gonna call my brother. DL, I'm going to call my brother. I call D.L. Hughley on the phone. I say, hey, baby, yeah. Huh? That's how he responds, yeah. Did he know it was you? Yes, he, because they called him to tell him no, Monique's gonna be calling. Right. Like, this, it was getting crazy. Right. I'm like, just let me get on the phone with my brother, right? Yeah. Hey, D.L., yeah. I said, listen, I just got off the phone with your team, and they wanted to play this game, would you rather? And it was like, Stupid, like asking me about my husband and Lee Daniels and Corinne Steffens and his exact words, well, that's how we do it. I said, DL, how does that uplift our community? And again, I don't know what y'all trying to insinuate, but brother, what you doing? Like I said, that's just how we do it. So it is what it is. Now, it got so ugly that my attorney had to send a cease and desist. So it never aired. So we have like, 
when Cat Williams talk and people, truth tellers talk, we have receipts to everything we're saying. That's how that whole thing got started. Now, I'm just gonna be honest. We've heard this before. Uh, we heard it when it first happened. You know, I just don't, when she said the thing about insinuating, I don't know about her husband. I don't know a lot about her husband, but this ain't the first time I heard someone's ex if maybe, you know, trying to insinuate, maybe he might be going both ways. You know what I mean? So I would say allegedly, maybe they think he may be going both ways. I don't know why they say it and why they insinuated this with that question, but I can see where she got a little upset about it. But that should have been it. Like, you know, nah, I don't discuss the family. Let's have another question. You see what I'm saying? Instead of going so deep with it, with the family thing, trying to make it more than what it is. But, I mean, it's just, hmm. But anyway, DL responded. All right. So let's hear what DL had to say. Let's go. Well, Club Shay Shay is getting messier and messier. Uh, it's almost like Wendy Williams didn't go anywhere. She just got a weight set. Um, and so Monique was on. Every time I see Monique these days, she's on uh, doing some greasy video with her and her daddy complaining about something or working out. I don't know nobody that work out that much in gain weight unless every crunch you do has got capped in the front of it. But apparently she goes on Club Shay Shay and tells the story about how she came on my radio show and I wasn't there at the time. And uh, uh, my co-host Jasmine Sanders played a game that we played all the time with everybody called Would You Rather. She apparently was so offended by that that she says she got off. She called me. Monique did. And she said I was very dismissive. Like, huh? Monique's a liar. When Monique did call me, I heard her, her complaints. I listened to her and I pulled the segment. So if I had been as dismissive as she alleges I was, that segment would have aired. It didn't because I respected her wishes. She's a liar. <laughs> that's that was funny what he said about uh Wendy Williams and uh Shannon Sharp. So like it's just another uh Wendy Williams except she got a weight set. <laughs> no Shannon Sharp, like super big. But I remember this situation and I'm I'm pretty sure I heard Monique say that DL her brother was stand up because he pulled it and would not let it air. I could have sworn she said that. But I don't know, man. So let's let's continue on listening to this, man. Let's see what else. Okay. It's family. My husband is my family. Yeah. Now, you babies that are really good with this internet, through the years, I've watched DL speak ill of me. Through the years. I never knew me, I never knew DL Hughley had a problem with me. But when Cass said they all a group, he forgot to put DL Hughley in the group. Mm -hmm. Through the years, I was bitter. I was dangerous with what I was doing, saying that it was inequality. My husband didn't know what he was doing. This went on through the years. I was unloved, all of these things. And I said to myself, I'ma see you. Okay, so I I don't know what she was saying this, because I do remember DL coming on and saying that he didn't like how she was getting drugged out here and all this stuff and against everybody's wishes, you know, he went ahead and brought her in on his, I don't know if he had a tour going on, whatever, like comedian, you know, stand up type stuff. And they were going to do this show together, you know, and this is what she's going to talk about coming up. But if somebody hated you that much, why would he take a chance in trying to help you get back on if he hated you that much? You see what I'm saying? But this is what she did. So let's get it. I just want to catch y'all up on something for those of you that didn't know. Mm -mm. I'm going to see you. I didn't go on nobody's show. I didn't say nothing to nobody, but I knew the time would come that I would see him. We were scheduled to do a show in Los Angeles. I was the headliner of that show. His name was on it, then his name came off. I didn't question it. But I knew I'm a Sam, right? Eventually. Okay, now we have a show in Detroit. Contractually, I was the headliner. D.L. Hughley posted a memo. Now, when you signed your deal for the Ravens, did you sign a contract or a memorandum? I signed a contract. You see how you say that? 
like anybody that knows good business, you sign the memo is saying this is what I would like. Right. But the contract is saying this is what, what it, it is. is. Okay. Yes. He put out a memo to our community, and that touched me a little different because I was saying, why would you lie to our babies? Because now they're thinking if they send somebody a memo, that's what they're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was contractually signed to go as the headliner. Right. You mean you go last? D.O. Hughley didn't come into the building until 9.30. Now, contractually, I said I have to be on stage by 9.30 because if the show starts at 8, I refuse to keep an audience waiting. Right. That is disrespectful to the oh, audience. Correct. When I went out on that stage, Shannon, I made sure everything I said, he heard me because now you're here and I'm going to say it to you. Mm -hmm. And I said some things on that stage that I said he was cowardly. And some folks said, how could you say that? How could you do that? And then I posted some things to say, this is what I meant. See, you came after my husband. And when you had a chance to fix it, when you had a chance to say, Mo, my bad, you know, right. we don't even right. get down like that. Right. You told me it is what it is. And until he's brave enough and courageous enough to say, this is what really happened, y'all. Y'all have never known me to be no shit starter. Folks ain't never known me to go over and kick a sandwich out of somebody's hand that's hungry. But what people do know is, if you kick me, damn if I ain't going to kick you back. Right. Okay, so we're going to look at the memo that DL, um, he put out. And what I'm trying to do is bring it in a little closer. Y'all can see that heading part. That's the most important part. And it's going to show you that it's um, what is it? DL Hughley, five-time production. 100% headliner. Now, go down by the arrow. You will see the lineup. D.L. Hughley closing, and then Monique, and then the other artists. Okay? So, the memo usually is, you know, and it's just the rest of the, the memo, so it's nothing really in that. But the memo is usually after the contract's been signed, and this is going to be the layout, and this is what everybody's going off, and this is what's handed to you guys afterwards, you know? But Monique submitted this right here. This is her contract. But she, she tried to be a little slick with it. They even got the little initial at the bottom. But um, this is what they wrote up and sent probably the company prior to everything being finalized. So this is what her company wrote up with all what she wanted. She wanted to close and be the headliner and all this stuff. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to go into play. So it's not the finalized uh, agreement. Let's just put it like that. And as you can see over to the side, DL made a comment about like, hold up, that's you. You really showing everyone a contract. You submitted from your own company. I smell BS, uh, and I wouldn't pick it up with the old A birth certificate paper it was written on. So basically, yeah, it's the contract that they submitted to the company or the venue. Or, the, or the, I say the manager, whoever produced the dog on the show. Let's just do that. And right here, it shows that's their headline. I mean, their um, heading. So uh, you can't say this is what you wanted, but that ain't saying that you ended up with that, which is kind of hard to understand when DL was the headline and it was his leading type of um, venue show. That's all I'm trying to say with this. Because that's fair play. Right. So there was one left out the pack. And when you have people that continually don't take accountability, that's why you see us in the state of affairs we're in. I'm a firm believer, Mo, that everybody don't play the same. And someone once told me, what is joke to you is death to someone else. What is joke? That's why we don't play with people's families. No. When we had the Monique show, the radio show, listen, you can't come on here and speak ill of no one because we don't play like that because we know how this business works. Right. So when you allow that to happen, what do you think is going to come back your way? What do you think? And D.O. Hughley, please no brother, we still love you. Just take accountability for it. And we move forward. I remember reading something about the uh, about the situation in Detroit. I didn't know the the depth of the magnitude of it. I, I remember reading something about a memo about. I, I guess it's an addendum that was added on, but the contract is the contract. 
the contract is the contract. And what happens is because of the messenger, it was easy to pile on. Mm -hmm. It was my thing. She keeps going back to the contract is the contract, which I agree 199.999%. The contract is the contract. So if the contract, the contract, why didn't you close? Why did you still agree to it? See, that's the thing. See, I end up watching that. And DL came on, and he came on like, wow. Like, she said what she had to say, and she bounced out the door. Because you said yourself, DL still went on after you. I saw it. And he was like, wow. Because he didn't know she was holding all this animosity towards him. And now she said in one of her other interviews, now this is a crazy thing. She said it was something that happened on that, um, that show DL had. You know, he had that family show. She said it had something to do with that back then, with a lot of this, why she had a problem with DL, not that radio show. So I don't know where she's, you know, what's, what's really going on with Monique on this, but I don't think whatever, all this stuff to me is not that deep where you go and throw shots like that. Because these shots you can't take back. I mean, I'm just going to be honest. You trying to get your career off and going and saying this and this, I mean, even coming back years later, because this was all years ago. So coming back now and still talking about the same freaking thing. And then you want people to be accountable and apologize. I don't know what you want, but why? You should have moved on. When you start getting your stuff back, you did your Netflix special, which was, I mean, I'm just going to be honest. That, that special was garbage. It was. I, I was expecting her to come. I was really looking for her to come and kill it because all this stuff, you know, been going on. I was like, this is her chance to get it back. Let's go. Watched it. I couldn't find a good laugh in it. I'm going to be honest. It was not a good show. It was not. Not to be so and like waiting for it. And I just think she just dropped the ball on that. And she kind of proved to a lot of people that she still didn't have it. It ain't the same Monique no more that used to be, y'all skinny bitches. You know, that ain't the same Monique up there now. This the, has something my brothers and sisters Monique. You know, since she got brother and sister talk, she's kind of changed. And I don't know that happened between when she got with her, her husband, which I think it did, but she need to go back to that if she gonna do stand up. She need to be raw Monique talking real shit. Not all this, I don't know. I don't know, grown shit. I guess you wanna call it, I don't know. But let's let her finish and then DL gonna cap this. It was easy to pile on. And then when you have our, some of our black folk that go sit in front of a white man and speak ill of their people, I'm like, y'all, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What, what are we coming to that we're gonna sit in front of this white man I can't even say his name, I refuse. Everybody know who he is. We sit in front of him and we just let this man say any and everything about us and then we go right in with him. That Now see, that to me is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And y'all babies that's good with this little computer, don't take my word. You can just go through the years of this cat just running his mouth. Mm -hmm. And it's like, stop doing that because but what are we saying to the babies coming behind us? Now let me, let me tell y'all something real quick. Um, about that Netflix thing. You know, when she didn't get the money she wanted at the first, she went and said they want to boycott because they're racist. Do you know <laughs> the owners of the Netflix organization? I don't know, something to top, whatever. I think they're the owners. A black and white couple. And on top of that, they had hired uh, several black comedians to uh, do their shows during that time frame, even after that time frame. So she was wanting to boy wanted everybody to boycott it because she didn't get a higher paying position to do hers. But like the guy, like even Dave Chappelle said, it's based on your last ticket sales of what they will pay you. So if you had higher ticket sales, that would just, even Kevin uh, Cat Williams said that. But at the time she hadn't toured in a while, so she didn't have no high numbers. So that's why she wasn't offered. That's why she went and did these tours the upper game, and then they brought her on. But, you know, it's crazy that she's saying all this stuff. You want to boycott it, but then you came back and did a special. So what, what are we talking about here? You see what I'm saying? When people try to flip the shit around when it's them, and now they you go back and they give you another shot. Because like the dude said, Netflix don't call nobody. 
you have to call Netflix. So your husband, y'all reach back out to Netflix for this special that y'all want to boycott. Let's, let's just keep that in mind now. But, you know, you're talking all this other stuff. Come on, Monique, now. Okay, so I think DL just done had enough. So DL had to, you know, come back and say some things. So this is what he finished out with, and I think he's done with it. Let's get it. It's, it's also befuddles the shit out of me how somebody who has a comedian talks as much shit about everybody else as she does. She has the temerity to be offended about anything as much shit as you say about people. Then she encouraged everybody. Uh, allegedly, it stems from the fact that I used to always talk about her on video after video. And she encouraged her sweet babies to look at the video and find them. Do that. Do exactly what she says. And you know what you're not going to find? You're not going to find any evidence of that because Monique is a liar. She's lying about that. But what you will find is Monique talking about some uh, uh, alleged contract dispute we had. Look at the ticket. It says D.L. Hughley, then Monique. She knows the story. But what she did in response to that, she talked about my dog, my wife. This broad even bought out my daughter's personal trauma. My daughter was molested and Monique bought that shit out and, t and told the world that I allowed my daughter to in front of me. The lying mother. And it only stopped when everybody from my family checked her. It's interesting. You know what else you won't see Monique doing? You won't ever see a, her with her family, videos with her children or grandchildren because nobody with me. How do you have sweet babies when your own babies don't f with you? How do, how do you love us for real when there's no evidence of anybody loving you for real except your daddy who you apparently have to pay? And FYI, daughters are paid for by daddies, not daddies who get paid by their daughters. You'll never, you know what else you won't see Monique doing? Telling jokes. Monique, uh, if she just spends as much time actually writing jokes and writing her Netflix special as she did complaining about not having one, it wouldn't have been trash. It got the wor worst reviews of any Netflix special in history because that's what Monique does. She complains and she has grievances. You never see her being a human being. You never see her being sweet. She knows she was lying. And it only stopped when everybody from my family checked her. There's a reason why everywhere she go, it starts. Everywhere she goes. How is it that nobody fucks with you, not even your family? How do you, or well, I was on the road, get it. I get it every goddamn week. Look at my schedule versus yours. See how much I'm going. And I still manage to have a relationship that I cherish with my children. Can you say the same? You can't. Because all you do is talk about your grievances and who did you wrong. There's a reason you are fought by yourself. There's a reason you got to pay a man to love you. It's sad. There's an old adage that says you can't buy love. It's a shame, Monique, that you probably always will have to. But there it is, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I tried to break it down best I could to try to show you what was really going on under the scenes with all this stuff. I, I don't think this special is going to hit off like, definitely going to hit off like Cat Williams did. But I think it's time for Monique to let that shit go. Going back and forth with these certain people and... It's not doing that for your career. Let's just say that. Tyler Perry, all these other ones, I got the scoop on that too. So those will be the next couple of videos coming out this weekend. So make sure you hit that notification and get the next videos because I'm going to bring it to you. I'm going to try to break it down like this one. So y'all know as always, and as always, it is your boy, Mr. Nobody. <laughs> And I'm up out of here. Stay tuned for the next foolery popping up right here. And your boy's out of here. Peace. All right, all right, all right. All right.